Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a game called Nevermind. You may recognize this game because I played an earlier version of it on my channel a couple years ago. The developer uh, joined us for that play session and she actually just sent me a new updated version uh, with a new level and just updated everything. So we're going to play this and we're going to check it out. And uh, if you'd like to check out the <laughs> previous version, well, uh, it was literally a couple years ago, so it's a little bit lower quality, but you can find that link down below in the description box. Otherwise, let's uh, let's take a look around. This game uh, has been on, I think it's Kickstarter? Maybe it's Indiegogo, but they've gotten funding. Uh, you may notice I have a little uh, biofeedback sensor on my ear now. Previously, it was a heart monitor, and it was on your chest, I think. Now they have something, I think it's with Intel, uh, so you have a little earlobe clip and you can see how that interacts with the game right here you have a heart rate sensor i am currently using a wild divine personal edition they take a data set to get a general um summary of your heartbeat right now mine's up around 70 or 80 if i just rest it goes down to about 55 to 60. so uh, i have the fear ui set as on so you can see a level of your fear so that should be cool i don't know what that's going to look like in the game we have a default fear sensitivity we have a sensor. Uh, oh, this is the different things. Okay, cool. Sound, graphics, that all should be fine. Yes, that's all we want. All right, so let's let's just go ahead and jump in. Uh, I have no idea what to expect. This is never mind the updated edition. Here we go. Please adjust your gamma slider. All right, we can do that so that you can is barely visible. All right, that is barely visible for me. Let me see how it looks for you guys. Looks about the same. All right, I can barely see that. Begin. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's pretty high sensitivity. Okay, we can't run. We can, we can, is that a little eye? I think that's a little eye in the center of our screen. I'm gonna turn the sensitivity down just a bit. Uh, it is pretty, it is pretty high sensitivity right now. Let's bring it down just a little bit. All right, cool. Uh, handbook, what is that? Neuroprobing. Purpose. Okay, we'll check that out in a little bit. Let's go ahead and just get started in the game. Touch anywhere on the screen to continue. Hello, Doctor. Our facial recognition sensors detect that you must be Neurostal Neurostalgia's newest neuroprober. Welcome to the team. We can take care of the final registration details here. Continue. We appreciate you arriving extra early today. We find it helps to onboard new neuroprobers before colleagues and clients arrive. As a neuroprober, you will be delving into the subconscious mind of our clients to help them work through their struggles with psychological trauma. It is deeply important work, but work that requires a great deal of security and discretion. We will now proceed to verify your identity. The experience ahead will contain, this is a warning for everyone who's watching, it will contain intense and disturbing scenes and situations. These scenarios may trigger, trigger adverse reactions in participants who may be especially sensitive to narratives and imagery involving psychological trauma. By proceeding forward, you take full responsibility for what you may experience ahead. Do you agree to this? I agree. If you don't agree while you're watching, please stop watching. Uh, if you need an adult or a cuddly thing to hold on to, please go get that. Uh, or otherwise, uh, uh, if you're okay with that stuff, here we go. I, that didn't all didn't really make sense, but that's okay. My name is TJ Smith, in case you didn't know. We will check this information against our records to complete the identity verification procedure. We see you came wearing your assigned iStalgia device. Thank you for your compliance with standard policy. You may notice tips and points of interaction within the Institute will be highlighted by the lens. Is that, was that the little eye thing, maybe, possibly? Your first day registration is complete. Please proceed to the staff-only area behind you. Your iStalgia lens has been synced to your employee account and will grant you access through the doors. All right, and we're back. Achievement unlocked, first day of work. We did it, guys, we did it. We're in. Staff only, is this, oh, this is where we can go. Can we go in here? Is this possible? Can't seem to, all right, nope. No clicking of the door handle, but we can go in this way. Staff only. All right, yeah, that's the nostalgia thing. Cool. Can't turn off the lights though. Got to keep them on. Don't want people wandering around in the dark. Can we close you? No. All right. Just checking what's uh, what's possibilities. Exploring this game more so than I usually do, I think. Just because uh, I don't know. It's I have like a personal connection with this game, having uh, 
the developer who her name's Aaron Reynolds. She's one of the developers. There's a group, a team of them. Oh, this is my noise. Oh. Uh, they're also from Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles. They developed it, I think, at USC, or maybe they all met at USC. Dr. TJ Smith, check that out. My name's right there. Let's get some water first. Oh, wh what? There's birds. In oh, wow. This is all new. Previously, you walked into like a long hallway with lots of doors, and I think you walked to the end of the long hallway. So this is now kind of like a indoor park. It's right about sunset, it looks like. Let's start checking out the clouds. You got this glowing thing in the middle, which looks awesome. And uh, a dead end right there. <laughs> Let's check out. Other doctors can come in here. Sector C, which I, I think there's two levels that we can play. So I'll probably split it up into two videos. Nothing. So I guess let's just go to our office. You can't run, so you gotta take your time. You gotta be patient. Patient with yourself. Alright. Dr. TJ Smith. Oh, perfect. The plant just like how I like it. And the time looking symbol thing. And the cactus that I'm always a big fan of. Interact. We can interact with that. Can we interact with anything on our desk? It's actually faster to strafe than it is to like walk forward. So I'm walking forward. Uh, I'm I'm walking forward until I hit the trash can. But if you st strafe, I, or if you go diagonal, it's actually the fastest. <laughs> Just diagonal everywhere. All right, we're gonna interact with this. Welcome, Doctor Smith. That my my grandfather is a is a doctor. So that's like I feel like I'm in a, my grandfather now. Handbook or select client. Let's check out the handbook first. This is the thing that we were gonna check out in our menu earlier. Neuroprobing is a cutting-edge revolutionary technique that allows skilled medical professionals to enter into and engage with the subconscious mind of a client, unearthing memories and events that the client may have long since buried. Mindscape. Each client's subconscious mind offers a unique, often surreal perspective of their past. While some of the rules of the real world may apply, the experienced neuroprober learns to expect the unexpected while exploring their client's uh, subconscious. Imprints. Through a series of questioning and monitoring that occurs pre-neuroprobing, the Nostalgia Institute is also able to fashion an imprint of that client that can be re-experienced independent of the client at a later date. The key data from these sessions are replayed as the neuroprober enters into the client's subconscious. If you're not interested in this, you can, you're free to skip ahead. I'm just going to explore this for people who are interested in the, the details of this. Uh, okay, so a series of questions. You can, you can recreate the experience uh, that you can do again later on. Okay. Memories. While neuroprobing, you will encounter objects that look like photographs. These are how your, sub your consciousness interprets the concrete memory moments it finds within the client's psyche. Typically, there are about 10 of these memory photos found in each psyche, but you'll find that only half of these photos present an actual moment relating to the trauma, so it's a puzzle to know which ones are useful and which ones are not. The other half tend to be false memories created by the client's conscious mind as a, as a consequence of their coping process. So as if you watch the first series on this. Oh, this is the fear UI up in the top, up in the top left. Uh, and w so it's showing me how fast my heart is beating. I'm trying to slow it down. It gets green as you're slower. And it was getting red and fast when it was, and it's yellow right now in the middle. <laughs> That's funny. Um, anyways, uh, in the first, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll check it out. I'm sure we'll come back to all those photographs at some point in this video. While some photos are freely available in the subconscious mind, others are buried deeply within and will need to be coaxed out. By carefully observing the world around you and responding to its cues, you'll be able to progress, progress deeper and deeper into the client's memory, unpuzzling the mental defenses the client has built up, ultimately unlocking its secrets and helping the client find true peace. Moving Wasid, all right, we understand that, and a mouse-like movement to, as though you had a keyboard. That's great. <laughs> while using a mouse-like movement to look around. Crazy. Calm. The subconscious doesn't take kindly to intruders and will take every opportunity to feed off any sensations of anxiety or tension you offer to it. If you can, try to stay calm and peaceful, even in the face of terror. If you can calm yourself, you'll find the subconscious mind will calm itself too. Experiment with breathing exercises or closing your eyes to block out stimuli. Each neuroprober finds what works best for them. So this game is also designed to help people perhaps with traumatic past or situations, learn how to cope with and learn, uh, learn how to cope with and practice calming mechanisms. So it can be both an educational and, uh, you know, entertainment 
value. Learning how to calm yourself down in the face of fear. When you have found all 10 photos that have a client's subconscious mind, you must put five of the memories that actually represent the trauma in the proper order. Doing so will, at last, fully release the true traumatic memory to the client's conscious mind. Once released, the client can then proceed to work through that memory and finally start down the path toward recovery. That's actually, like, pretty legit, like, psychiatry mechanism. Learning to realize what really happened and not burying it underneath, you know pushing it away and then coming to terms with it that's very interesting this, i'm a psych major in college was a psych major i graduated some details of a given trauma can be especially tenacious but by gently and cleverly listening to the clues that the mind gives you you will find all you need to work through all you need to work through it just think of it as a puzzle for you to solve oh really interactions some parts of the subconscious allow you to interact with them by making a left-click motion as if you were moving a mouse to engage with them. Holding on to right-click will allow you to move the item around to examine it further to rotate it. What you can interact with varies per client. Just follow the cues within their subconscious mind. They will guide you towards interactive objects of interest. Progress. You are, as you are neuroprobing a patient's mindscape, you may notice the Institute's logo appear and rotate before fading away. This is the Institute's way of recording and saving your progress as a neuroprober. That's the saving symbol. The Neurostalgia Institute history. For decades, the Neurostalgia Institute has boldly forged a path into the future, charting the unexplored waters of health treatment, combining cutting-edge technology and best-in-class professionals to administer treatments that have forever changed the field of therapeutic wellness. It is a non-profit organization dedicated to the study and treatment of psychological trauma. Academic research, consultation, standard treatments, and non-standard treatments are all offered at the Institute. Neurostalgia is most well known for its use of neuroprobing, a revolutionary and highly effective method of treatment for clients who struggle with deeply repressed memories of traumatic events and for whom other forms of treatment have been unsuccessful. Future. The Neurostalgia Institute is a growing establishment that is constantly seeking out the most effective and cutting-edge treatment options for its clients and care of its employees, staff. Oh, those are the credits. Let's see if we see Aaron real quick. Flying Mollusk Core Team. Aaron Reynolds, yay! There we go. Well, we're going to examine the rest of the credits later on. I just wanted to see Aaron's name. She's very, 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 very kind. Very kind. So I'm sure the rest of them are great, too. More information coming soon on the overview of trauma, causes, treatment, resources, and helping. Cool. All right, now we know what we're supposed to do. Let's select our client. Client Train Sim, a simulated mindscape constructed by Neurostalgia to help with new employee orientation. So we could do Train Sim, percentage of imprint. Oh, is there four? Is there four levels? There's the Train Sim, 2514183312. All right. So we'll do train sim in this video. We're already at like 10 minutes or something. We'll do train sim and then we will, uh, I'll do a separate video for each one of these. So if you don't want to see the train sim, go ahead and click on uh, episode two and you can see number patient 251. Oh, in a future update. So there's only two levels right now. So 251 was what we'll do in the second video. Here we go. Activate imprint. Let's get into it. Oh, it's... Oh, we... What? <laughs> Is that it? Activate imprint. Oh, it's this door over here. Okay. I wasn't... I was waiting for a loading screen and stuff like that. All right, goodbye, office. I love you. Cool. Really pretty. Whoa. <laughs> Well, that's different, isn't it? <laughs> okay. All right. We're going inside the mind. Feel that fear UI, though. Pretty cool. Swirling galaxy to infinity. And Things beyond. have become almost unbearable for me and for my family. Nothing has helped. I guess that's why I'm here. So, um, if I just talk about my troubles, you'll be able to use it later to help with the procedure? Seems hard to believe, but you're the experts. I think many of my issues started when I was young. So why don't we start with my childhood days, yes? Okay, let's see. I was raised in a lovely cottage in rural Germany. We didn't have much, but my twin sister, our father, and I got by. 
There was actually a great famine for much of my early childhood, and often we went without food. I had many happy moments with my family, but the darkest times began when my father remarried. My stepmother always resented my sister and me. We didn't like her much either, to be honest. God, she was horrible. Sometimes she would take my sister and me out for long walks in the forest, and then she'd hurry home. My sister and I couldn't keep up and we'd often get lost. We learned to leave a trail of whatever we could find on those walks to help us get home. I guess in some ways our stepmother helped us become resourceful like that. My sister is a real fighter, the kind of woman any girl or boy could look up to. She volunteers to work with various youth organizations now. Um, enough about her. Okay, what else? Maybe I should talk about my feelings, yes? You may find it hard to believe, but I've always struggled with various eating disorders and anxiety around food. Eating anything rich makes me feel scared and anxious. It's hard to describe. My sister has actually experienced similar issues, and it's worsened for us both as we've gotten older. That's not normal, now is it? We've seen countless doctors about this in the past. They've determined that our issues may be trauma-related, but have yet to help us sort out the underlying source. They have yet to fix us. And that's why we're here. So uh, an abusive stepmother, seems like, and uh, food anxiety. Uh-oh. Getting, getting a little gray. Welcome to Neuroprober Training. I am pleased to be your guide. When I'm speaking, you can always make a right-click motion to skip this instruction. So apparently we're afraid right now. Welcome to Neuroprober Training. Interesting. We may have to turn turn it down a little bit because I haven't I haven't even gotten anything to the scary part yet. Open the door. Notice everything. Whether you are speaking with a client directly or neuroprobing within their mind, it is always imperative to listen. You'll find that every detail of the subconscious is trying to tell its story. In the case of our clients, it's often the forgotten story of the trauma they experience. Some parts of the patient's memory may have become confused or corrupted by the conscious mind's attempts to reconcile or cover up the truth of what happened to them. However, if you look closely and carefully in the right places, you'll find that the truth will ultimately shine through. All right. Pick up the block. The ship. It's a cool looking ship. I would love to have that toy. Cupcake. Probably anxiety. Anything rich makes him... Oh, memory photos. That's right. While neuroprobing, you will encounter objects that look like photographs. This is how your consciousness interprets the concrete memory moments it finds within the client's psyche. Typically, there are about 10 of these memory photos found in each psyche. The mind can only hold on to so much. You'll find that half of these photos present an actual moment relating to the trauma. The other half tend to be false memories created by the client's conscious mind. It will ultimately be up to you to determine which are which. More on that later. First photo. My stepmother hated my twin sister and me. Okay. Oh, cool graphics. And there it goes up on the board. When you acknowledge a memory photo, it will surface more prominently in the client's psyche and, at that point, can be found in a safe area of the mind, often where you begin within the client's mind. When you have found all ten photos, you must put five of the memories that actually represent the trauma in the proper order. The Doing so will, at last, fully release the memory to the client's conscious mind. Often, he or she will experience a breakthrough at this moment. That breakthrough is what every neuroprober lives for, and is the key to the client finally being able to work towards true recovery. Exciting! Let's try this door. This door doesn't want to open. Never mind. Let's try this door. This door doesn't want to open either. Okay. Let's try this door. Nope. Let's try the cottage. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Because he grew up in the The most cottage. important thing you do as a neuroprober is find and acknowledge these photos. However, this is easier said than done. 
While some photos are freely available in the subconscious, others are buried deeply within and will need to be coaxed out. Oh, there's one right there. We'd often get rabbit stew. Dear brats, go away. Love your stepmom. Well, that's not very nice, is it? The fear you eye. We're going to turn the fear you eye down. Or the fear uh, sensor? Low. Okay. I don't know. I guess my heartbeat just likes to beat fast. I'm just excited all the time, guys. I'm just excited. I'm so excited about this game, y'all. I am so excited about this game. Alright, so these doors on the right do not open. We did find a photograph. However, we can't seem to open this door. Dear Brats, go away. Love, Stepmom. Can't go down the side. Okay. Oh, this door opened up down here. I see. Shifting mind? Dirt Interacting with one part of the mind can sometimes open up new areas of the psyche. Ah. Some things, like these doors, can change their state in response to actions taken elsewhere. I'm just too excited. Too excited. Let's go in. Opens the door. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Calm down. I'm so excited about this level. Okay. So it's pretty dark. Pick up. My sister saved me from becoming dinner. I wonder what story this is about. If you've ever heard this story before at some point. Don't spoil it in the comments, y'all. Have you noticed the world can sometimes become fuzzy and degraded, like static on a television? That's the client's subconscious mind reacting to your own feelings of fear, stress, and anxiety. The subconscious doesn't take kindly to intruders, and will take every opportunity to feed off of any sensations of anxiety or tension you offer to it. If you can, try to stay calm and peaceful, even in the face of the terror. If you can calm yourself, you'll find the subconscious will calm itself too. Maybe I should have, like, made myself... Let's see if we can, like... Can we reset the data set? You know? Like, right now I'm at, like... Well, no, it was at, like, 60. But it's, like, still really great for, like, 60. And do I just have a high blood pressure? Like, what's my problem? What's wrong with me? Neuroprober's puzzles. It's also getting kind Here's of an example of an especially buried memory. Some oh. details of a given trauma can be especially tenacious, but by gently and cleverly listening to the clues the mind gives you, you will find all you need to work through it. Just think of it as a puzzle for you to solve. When you focus on these puzzles, make a right-click motion if you need to break your concentration. I see, I see, I see. All right, one second, I gotta turn on some AC. It's getting real hot in this, this room right now. Can I do it without unplugging from the sensor? Let's see. Aha, I did it. Yeah, it's like almost 80 in my room right now. Hot. Okay, so let's try and do this puzzle right here. We're gonna zoom in on this, but maybe that's part of the reason that it's freaking out. My, my blood pressure's going up because I gotta cool myself down. All right, so we've got pink eye, looks like a silver eye. You guys can even see through that. Fog of war. We got pink eyes, so we need to put this over here. But we can't though. I need a place to s All right, so we need a place to put this stuff. Green needs to go with green, right? Oh, there we go. It just goes in the mouth. Aha. Perfect. The birds would never sing for us. How many pictures is that? Which way did we come from? Is this the way we're supposed to go? 
Yes. I'm gonna go with yes. Nope. Oh, these are little, like, markers that they had. I talked about how I used to, like, leave little markers in the woods when they went out exploring. Oh, okay! Hi! <laughs> I was like, that looks like a skull, and then I see a baby up on the tree. These are all baby trees. Isn't that cute? Oh. Whoop. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna run away. The baby heads everywhere. Baby, falling babies. It's raining babies. We found a picture. A terrible fire burned our home down. Okay. Okay. Follow the markers. We gotta calm down. What is our current BPM? We're at 60! What if we set it to high? <laughs> We're While fine now. Probing, your consciousness is lost deep inside the subconscious mind of the client. While this is a journey that you must make alone, we at the Neurostalgia Institute take the safety of our neuroprobers very seriously. If you need to access any of your neuroprober tools or pull your consciousness free, press your finger where an escape key might be. This will bring up your neuroprober tools and you can proceed as needed from there. Just imagine if you had a keyboard and a mouse. What would you do? So I guess high uh, sensitivity means as if you have a high BPM? resting BPM, which I guess I do. So instead of high sensitivity... Yeah, because this is much better. Alright, sweet. So I think we got all the puzzles in this room. So let's head on out. Yes, this is much better. Alright, so we came out of that door. Now we can go into this far door. Look at those five pictures there. I suspect the birds one is is false. I wonder if those hedges are gonna go away eventually. Let's go down this way. I'm just so excited for this new level. Stay calm even in the face of danger, guys. Even when you go into a new part of the Do you remember level. how I mentioned that the client's subconsciousness can feed off of your fear? Some especially vulnerable areas can be very sensitive and dangerous. When you place your consciousness in another subconsciousness, there is a risk of you getting hurt, of the pain and the turmoil of the client's subconscious drawing your own mind into its agony. You must brave these areas despite the risks. You must stay calm. Should you let your fears get the best of you, it will be incredibly difficult to proceed unharmed. We can do this, guys. Do we need to like, is this gonna be like amnesia? Do we have to run away from things? Okay. I'm doing my yoga breathing. Hello. You can even pick up and walk around with some objects. To do so, interact with it and then start walking while holding on to it. Oh, I wonder what I'm supposed to do with this. Holy Toledo. Did I get a picture? I didn't get a picture. <laughs> what picture? It turned the light off. That is the exact opposite of what I want to do. Uh oh, calm down. Wait. I think it changed the map.
So you can interact. Is there a specific song I'm supposed to play? Maybe we should put it back to default. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe we'll just turn it off. I don't know. A rocking horse. Can't really interact with it. You can just look at it. Let's do it again, boys! Oh, sorry. Did I do it? Okay, I got it. Question mark? And we're going through like a tunnel kind of thing. <laughs> the music is getting more intense. I, I think I've got the hang of this putting... Oh, this was an owl one. That one was cute. It's snowing now? Question mark? I'm gonna try putting the sensitivity on low. We're a little bit... We were a little bit elevated at that point. Oh, it is... Yeah, it's like snowing now. Or maybe we'll just, we might just turn it off. So that we can enjoy the beauty of the game without worrying about the s the static. Wow! What? What is this? What? And what is that? I can't even tell. We're just gonna turn it off. Okay. What is this? Okay. It's another one! <laughs> well. This psyche is getting more and- Hello! I know what to do with you. A frog! Did I drop it? I did it wrong, guys. Forgive me. Oh, wow. Do you guys remember what happens in the story? The fairy tale? I think it's by the Grimm Brothers, too, right? Isn't it? Let's carry on down this way. In case you haven't figured it out, I'll just go ahead and tell you. I'm sure you've already figured it out. But this really seems oddly like the Grimm fairy tale about Hansel and Gretel. No. Oh, hello. A picture. I found it. The house was a trap. Children would be cooked and eaten there. Where it's about a stepmother that would uh, lure kids in with sweet sweets and then throw them into... Can we fall off? No. There's an invisible wall. And then she would throw them into the oven and cook them and I think eat them too. It was like the hunters, and then I think a hunter found them in the woods when they were running away. Something like that. I don't know. She would take us to the forest to die. We would leave a trail to find our way back home. One time we got very lost. You would just take them to the forest and like abandon them? That is some poor parenting skills, guys. How to be a parent not. Minds intermingle. When your consciousness is in another subconsciousness, your psyches will inevitably intermingle. 
Just as the client's mind can affect you, you will see parts of yourself reflected in the mind of the client. Tread lightly and tread carefully. Cages. Oh. Cannot get through there. Oh, what? What? Not sure if that's like blood and guts or like frosting. I think it's blood and guts. It looks like the amnesia guy. I don't know what his name is. I apologize. Wonderful. Another cage. Should we go to the left or the right? I think we should go to the left. Wow. Or maybe it is sweets. I don't know. Oh, they're covered in ants. When things become too intense. At Neurostalgia, we take great measures to ensure our neuroprober's safety as best we can. However, you are about to proceed through to a highly dangerous area that you must face alone. If the client's subconscious becomes too volatile, you will be automatically removed from this area of the mind and taken to a safer area of the mind. Use this as an opportunity to collect yourself. When you're ready, you will be able to easily return to where you left off to battle the darkness and chaos that has taken root in the client's subconscious. Oh, man. I was bitten by an animal in my sleep. I think that's false. And I know these, these chocolate. It's so sharp. All right, so we gotta open that door and go in. This is the candy. This is the ha ca candy house. It's like candy land, but it's a house. Let's do it. Boss mode 101. Oh my lord. What? What? Okay. Whoa, okay. Double. Triple. One. Oh, what? Is there a rhythm to it? Three. Four. Five. One alleyway. I think it's random. Wow. I cannot tell. I think it's random. I don't think there's a system to it. Okay. Woo! I feel like the edges you're safe. See, like that doesn't hurt me. I'm all the way on the edge. I don't think there's any on the edges all the way down, but you gotta get there first. What the fudge? Here we go. Ah! Wait, was that even there before? Was this here before? It doesn't look like there's another one there. I like was pretty sure I would have been. I was good until the end, but I guess not. Okay, here we go. Ah! Oh! Oh my lord! <laughs> okay, we made it. We made it, we made it, we made it. Oh my lord. What am I supposed to do? Take the picture. It was the worst birthday ever. Oh, oh, we're in the fire! <laughs> what the fuck? If we had the, the like, fear UI thing going right now, this would be the worst. I would've, I would've lost, I would've lost the game. Was I supposed to grab a hand? I guess I guess so. I grabbed a hand. The hand saved me. Whew. It was the worst birthday ever. It sounds like it, homie. I don't doubt it. 
Squirrel. Bunny. Yeah, I'm on my animal game right now. Don't even mess with me. Swan. Out. Four for four. Can you name it before I do? Frog. Thank you, Mr. Swan. You're a very pretty swan. Here we go. Are we coming out? This is a cellar. This was in the cellar. Yeah, that was part of the storyline too. Another picture. We were lost, but found a house that looks nice. So yeah, these these bushes that we talked about they disappeared. Did we get them all yet? All right, we've got them all. Now let's put them in the right order. The house was a trap. Hey. I found a house that looked nice. Actually, let's put that second. The birds would never sing for us. I think that's a false one. A terrible fire burned our home down. I don't think that's right. My sister saved me from becoming dinner. My stepmother hated my twin sister and me. We'd often eat rabbit stew. She would take us to the forest to die, but we would leave a trail to find our way back home. One time we got very lost. I think that one is one of the ones. It was the worst birthday ever. I was bitten by an animal in my sleep. I think that's false too. My sister saved me. Let's put you last. There. My stepmother hated my twin sister and me. I would actually put you first. She hated the twin sister and me. What about she took us out for a walk or something? One time we got very lost. Is that it? Did we do it? I think we did it. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's all rushing back to me. It's so awful and I don't want to remember, but Yes, I now know the face of my demon. My sister and I, we were taken out into the woods by my stepmother for one of her nighttime walks. We'd usually find our way back by leaving a trail of whatever we could grab before the walk, marbles, pieces of paper, even pebbles. However, one night, she took us deep, deep into the woods. We brought some bread to leave a trail of crumbs, but all the forest creatures must have eaten them. We were lost, so lost. We tried to find our way back, but it was so dark and we were in a very strange part of the woods. We were lost for days, hungry and tired. We finally found a house and we were so hopeful that someone might be able to help us. That house though, that house was no ordinary house. It looked like candy and there was something off about it. We shouldn't have gone in, but well, we did. It was a prison for lost children like us. There was a woman in the house who would fatten her prisoners up and try to eat them. And that was going to be our fate. I was first. She tricked me into getting close to the oven and before I knew it, I was inside. If it weren't for my clever sister Gretel pulling me out in time, I would have been burned alive. We escaped that house and found our way home. After that, things started to get better. Our awful stepmother passed away and my family came into some wealth. I guess, I guess we just forgot about those events. I mean, how could you live with those images and memories inside your mind? Then again, they were always there. The old woman still torturing us beyond memory.
beyond time. However, I can now confront my past, confront this trauma. It is better to know than not to know. Word. Cool. All right, we finished the training. Uh, very nice. We helped. We helped that patient come to terms with his trauma. Good for us. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. It's kind of a long video, but uh, we're taking our time to explore, it, check it out, investigate different parts of it. We'll do um, the mission, the the other one, in the next video. Click on the part two if you want to check that out. And uh, I want to say thank you very much to Aaron and the Nevermind and Flying Mollusk teams for uh, letting me play this uh, early version, this updated early version. Uh, it is great to see y'all's teamwork and the progress of what you've made. So thank you very much. If you want to check out Nevermind, uh, I think this version is now on Steam if you want to check it out. So Nevermind on Steam. And um, I'll, I'll put a link down below. Hope I can remember to do that. And yeah, let me, let me, question of the video is, you know, what, what is one of your fears that if, if they were to make a level based on you, what would you, what would that level be like? Or what would you want to overcome? Or, you know, like your fear of something or your, your, I don't want you to get too deep and dark, but like what kind of trauma have you had that something that scares you? Um, for me, uh, I lost my sister when I was younger. So, uh, you know. Um, I guess, you know, I wouldn't be able to go into her memory, but like dealing with the loss of a family member when you're really young, maybe, you know, coming to terms with that. Um, I think that would be, that would be helpful for me and for, uh, other people. So there you go. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give a thumbs up, um, and, uh, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. All right. And uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, it is, it didn't reset. Let's try this again.